Hi, this is Mac, and I appreciate you coming back for another edition of our video mailbox. Karen from Wichita Falls wrote in and says, We ask you to reject any deal with Iran that fails to respect and protect Israel and does not include the safe and immediate return of Americans there. Karen, I have lots of concerns about the administration's deal with Iran, uh, what it means for Israel, what it means for other American allies in the Middle East, and what it means for our national security here at home. I've had a hearing on this uh, recently in the Armed Services Committee. We've had a number of classified briefings and meetings, and we're going to have more. Congress is scheduled to vote on this agreement sometime around mid-September. I think the concerns that I have and a lot of people have can be grouped kind of into three different areas. One area is verification and enforcement. We know Iran has always cheated on commitments that they have made. What makes us think they're going to follow through on this one? And particularly concerning to me are recent news reports that show that the administration's claims that Syri they negotiated all chemical weapons out of Syria are just not true. They, the Syrians thwarted our inspectors, they kept making chemical weapons, and they continue to kill people with them. So if that happened in Syria, when we're looking at a country that is more sophisticated, even bigger, uh, and have learned those lessons like Iran has, what makes us think we're going to be able to verify Iran is really keeping their end of the bargain? A second area is even if Iran keeps it perfectly, is this a good deal? And I think there's a lot of questions about whether allowing them to have upwards of $100 billion more money, plus whatever they can make by selling their oil on the market, is a good exchange for another nine months uh, delay in their nuclear program. I'm not sure it's a good deal, even if they follow it exactly. The third area of concern is all the other stuff Iran is doing. They're building missiles uh, that one day could reach the United States. They uh, fund terrorism. They cause instability throughout the Middle East and, and provoke in some ways this, this sectarian violence that we see on the news so often. What's going to happen is they're just going to get more money uh, through the sanctions relief to fuel all of these other problems that are causing so much trouble. So I've got a host of, of concerns about this. Uh, I think uh, this was not the best agreement that we could have reached. And I am very skeptical that the United States or our friends and allies like Israel are going to be better off if this agreement is followed through. I think my job is, whatever the, however the vote in Congress goes, I want to make sure that our military is strong enough to deal with whatever Iran does. And I, as I say, I think they're going to get more powerful. That means our military is going to have to be strengthened even more to deal with this increasing threat. I appreciate the opportunity to serve you uh, in our area and also to chair the Armed Services Committee. National security is the first job of the federal government, and I will continue to do my best to strengthen our security against Iran and other challenges. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next video mailbox.